We estimate that about a hundred million birds a year die in the New World by running into man-made structures, buildings, power lines, wind turbines, a hundred million. This is a rose-breasted grosbeak. This is a bird that ran into a window on the Temple University campus. And what we're gonna do is open the bird up, remove the insides, replace it with cotton, and, and this will become part of the Academy's bird collection here. One of the thousand or so birds we add every year, and one of the 200,000 plus birds that we have in our collection. So almost any species of bird you can think of, we can find in the collection here, from the smallest hummingbird, the Cuban bee hummingbird, to the largest ostrich. My name is Nate Rice. I'm the collection manager of ornithology at the Academy of Natural Sciences. And my job here is to care for our bird collection, representing over 90% of the world's bird diversity. And making specimens here at the Academy or the data of those specimens available to scientists at other institutions. It's, a, it's real important to keep these specimens um, well housed and in good condition. We know that there's an immediate use for these specimens. We know that they'll be used for genetic studies, um, for ecological surveys, but we have no idea, you know, even next year, 10 years from now, 100 years from now, what these specimens will be used for. Let me give you an example. You know, Audubon collected birds for the Academy. Almost as an afterthought, he prepared those specimens for our institution. We can now go to those specimens. Some of them represent extinct birds, like Carolina parakeet, for example. We can take a small snippet of skin off of the foot and we can sequence the DNA from that bird. So this is an extinct bird that we can now get a genetic profile for. Had Audubon not prepared those specimens, we wouldn't have that information. We wouldn't know how Carolina parakeet relates to other groups of birds. We can also take a little snippet of feather and we can get a glimpse of what the environment was like at that time. The same thing holds for this rose-breasted grosbeak. Again, we know what it can be used for right now. 10 years from now, 100 years from now, we can't predict what new techniques will be available to analyze this specimen. And then if you look at the label on this bird, it was collected by a fellow named James Bond on January 29, 1931. And we all know James Bond is the, the super agent 007, but James Bond was a, a real guy. He was a famous ornithologist that worked here at the Academy uh, who specialized in Caribbean birds. And uh, he uh, lived part of the time in Jamaica. His home there was next to the Fleming residence, and they became friends. And when Fleming was writing the, the spy agent books, he loved the name James Bond, and, and he used our James Bond's name as, as the international super agent 007.